All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another video. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we'll be talking about something that will uh, divide uh, the uh, the fans and the uh, opinions um, of fans, and um, and probably something that has been going on for a while, and um, something I've addressed already, but I want to uh, reiterate again: uh, Is Isco a um, an important player for Real Madrid? I guess that's the question. Um, is Isco needed at Real Madrid, or is he surplus to requirements? That is the question. So let's get down to it. Um, look, Isco is you know fantastic to watch. Uh, easily one of my favorite players. Love watching him when he's when he's full confidence. When he has a coach that will give him the confidence um, that he wants he will perform and he will do great things uh, for the team um, the only problem with Isco I would say and <clears throat> as for me as being an Isco fan I'd have to say that you do kind of more or less have to build a team around him he is kind of a um, he does retain the ball for a long time he likes to do his little one twos he likes to be the focal point at the team uh, and um, at Real Madrid it's that's never gonna happen at Real Madrid obviously um, he's only one of the many um, you know protagonists in the team so it's hard to say that Isco would would be that player that fits Real Madrid really but anyways <clears throat> um, so Isco in the weekend uh, versus Alavis I guess he came on at the 87th minute I think I guess he he had uh, some contribution to the third goal. Um, I don't know if it was lacrosse or something along those lines, but he had some kind of contribution. Anyhow, um, apparently he had a spat with uh, Chendo. Uh, <clears throat> so his real name is Miguel Porlan. Miguel Porlan's been at the club for over ten years. Um, for the for the older crowd out there, or I should say, for the slightly older crowd. Um, Miguel Porlan is a ex Real Madrid player. Um, he played in the '90s, I think. Uh, I really don't know much about him. I only started real supporting Real Madrid uh, in 2010. So, you know, all, all this, all these ex Madridistas, they're kind of. Um, I don't really know them too much. So, Miguel Porlan, I guess he plays in the, in the '90s and he's been at the club for 10 years now, and he's the uh, one of the Real Madrid delegates for the club or something along those lines, and. And Isco had a spat with him. Apparently, he, he rejected. The, uh, Chendo was about to go for a high five, and and Isco kind of just uh, didn't even you know raise his hand. He just kind of he just kind of you know um, not brushed it off, but kind of um, moved out of the way a little bit, and um, just almost in in not in disgust, I would say, but something along those lines, and. Um, he, he is getting a lot of stick for it. A lot of Madridistas or a lot of people in Spain uh, seem to um, seem to be giving him stick for that little uh, incident. And not only that, I think uh, throughout the years, um, Isco has been a divisive figure at Real Madrid. Some fans like him, some fans love him, and some fans just don't like him. He, he, some, sometimes he will have that little bit of ego. He has a little bit of you know feeling of superiority. Uh, sometimes those feelings do arise in him and and obviously when we see those things um, it does create some tension in the club it creates uh, you know divisive dis divisiveness in the um, in the in the audience in the in the fans so uh, it's, it's hard to say whether he's he's um, whether what he's doing is kind of is justified because look <clears throat> the guy's been He's been a really he's been a really good player for Real Madrid. The only problem is that is he a necessary player? That's the question. Um, so he's 26 right now. He's going to be 27 this year on <clears throat> April 21st, um, and he's getting a lot of stick at the moment. And for me, I kind of understand that he's been through three managers. Three is it? Anch um, well, actually, no. I think it's more. It's been Ancelotti. It's been. Uh, <laughs> Say I won't even count the the ones who've stayed really for a short period of time, um, but let me let me go through them. So Ancelotti, Zidane, and now Solari. So he's been through three managers that 
really have um, have been kind of reluctant to play Isco as a uh, you know concrete uh, starter because of the way he plays. You know, he, he does tend to uh, hold on to the ball quite a bit, and and he has he's not the you know he kind of wants to be the protagonist of a of a game and, and that's not exactly how it works so there has been he has gone through you know tumultuous times and and it seems like again he's going through that but it seems like this time it's 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 dragging on longer i know with ancelotti it, he was playing a lot at the beginning and then he got dropped and then he played again and so you know he was it was kind of on and off and then with zidane also it was kind of like that it was kind of like well he would play here and then he he would he would, it would he wouldn't play as much and then he would play here he wouldn't play as much um and even Zidane guaranteed him a starter a starting place when he went from Malaga to Real Madrid I think that's why he went to Real Madrid or something like that apparently that was in the news I'm not sure if it was true but um but yeah and he didn't get that and Isco was really frustrated and uh and you know obviously Zidane when when Zidane got to manage Isco he, he didn't get that still and you know I can understand Isco's frustration, you know, because he he, he he does maybe sometimes expect to be a, a player in the starting 11. However, he plays in the number 10 role. He's always played in the number 10 role. He's not really a winger. He, he's more of a playmaker. He, he loves to create. He loves to create. And um, the problem with that is that Solari doesn't have a place for him. Solari plays a 4-3-3, but he kind of a... A defensive 4-3-3 I guess he has a center defensive midfielder and Zidane kind of had that also so that's why you didn't see Isco as much um, under Zidane also but Zidane I think um, with Zidane and Isco had a better relationship with Solari it's not working out at all um, so it's it's hard to see where this is gonna go but if Solari does stay here like I've said Isco will be gone for sure, 100%. Uh, but is he a luxury player? Is he a luxury player? And my answer to that would have to be, he is a luxury player. Just because it's hard to play him in that number 10 position with Solari being the coach. And right now, Solari has the power um, because of his results. If Solari didn't have the results, then they this would be an entirely different story. But because Solari is getting the results, and because the players are backing Solari, it's very hard for Isco to um, to really um, have a say, I guess, to have uh, some player power. Um, so it, it's hard to say. And and Isco just signed a new contract, you know, when under Julian Lobetegui, uh, you know, stating that he would be here until 20, uh, 2022, I believe, and he had a 700 million release clause, you know. Um, so he he's gonna be if 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 we if we sell him if Real Madrid sell him he will be gone for quite a quite a hefty fee. Um, but yeah, like I said, he is somewhat of a luxury player. He is. I love to watch him play, and personally, I would love to. Um, if I was the coach, I would love to have a, a place for Isco in the team. Unfortunately, Solari is not like that. He doesn't play like that. He probably will never play like that. And um, right now, Isco is, you know, surplus to requirements. And if if this continues, if Solari continues being the coach, then Isco will be sold in the summer, 100%. So um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Um, you know, do comment, do, do uh, have your say on whether Isco is a luxury player, on whether you guys think he should stay at the club. Um, whether you guys think he is a um, maybe he is a fundamental um, part you know of the of the club's success recent success past success and maybe a future success you know uh, should we should we have a place for him at the club so um, yeah ha do have your say do do comment because I do think he's a luxury player but if I was the coach, I would love to have, um, I would love to put him in the starting 11. But right now, as we can see, he is a luxury player under Solari. But that's all I have for you guys. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow for the match preview. So thank you guys for watching.